Hello and welcome to another episode of Trek Hammer. I'm Zoe Kirk Robinson and today we're looking at Star Trek, the original series, Season 1, Episode 2, as they're shown on the Blu-rays. This one's Charlie X. Okay, with this one I was very surprised that Star Trek went straight to horror after the first episode, after the pilot. This is a Twilight Zone episode. No two ways about it. This would per fit perfectly on the Twilight Zone. We've got a character who is essentially, he's grown up alone and doesn't understand how humans interact, which is wonderful setting. It gets to explain how the Federation uh, society works. So what's actually expected of people in this uh, new society? How do they act? Great way to introduce a new show, really, isn't it? It's a perfect one. Have an outsider come in and learn how people act. Really great thing. But that's not what it's doing. It makes you think it's going to be like that with the morality of, oh, you shouldn't uh, greet people by a slap on the arse or say something like that. Even though Charlie is, at that point, just mimicking what he's seen two guys do in another part of the ship. They, uh, One of them's uh, laughing and joking, one of them's laughing and joking. So, right, OK, you bastard, I'll see you later, that kind of thing. It smacks him on the arse and walks off. He does that to uh, Yuma Rand. That's a bad thing. Which comes back later on, where he actually says just this thing. I'm trying, and I'm doing everything that I'm told to, but when I do it, it's wrong. And yes, that is exactly his experience. I felt for the guy at that point. This show was written so well. So he's trying his best. He's trying to fit in. He's trying to learn all the rules. But every time he thinks he's got it, no, there's another layer. Human society is so layered. Like, this is the rule for this, but not for that. And this rule won't work on it for that, but it will work for this up here, but not for that. And it's, it's amazingly well layered. And to have it from this point of view of an outsider coming in and trying to learn these things, and he wants to be accepted so much, it's wonderful. So you start to feel sorry for this kid who's coming in and just trying his best. And then the magic powers come in. And all of a sudden it goes from, oh, I felt sorry for you, but now you're a mass murderer. He kills indiscriminately to protect himself. And as it says at the end, he will use those powers. And at some point, you will have to kill him or he will kill you. It's true. Because when you have an angry adolescent who thinks the world is against him and that he can't get a, a place to fit in and he's trying so hard, but every time he does it, it's like, no, you're wrong. Because we've all felt that as kids and as adolescents, especially when you go back in your memory, you think... There was that time when I felt like everything I did was wrong because the world was expecting me to act in a way that it hadn't actually told me. It just expected me to have absorbed all of these rules that everyone else knew, but I didn't. Yeah, I felt for the guy, but at the same time, he kills to defend himself with no remorse. He doesn't seem to care. And that's where the horror comes in. This guy is angry, justifiably angry, so you can still uh, feel for him in that way. But he's a danger to everyone around him. So how do you work that out? And the way that they decide how to sort this, perfect. We're going to tax him and tax him and tax him till he breaks. And then we're going to go for it. That oh, thinking your way out of the problem. Kirk at no point tries to fight this kid. He doesn't try to be more powerful. He knows he can't. So he works around it with his mind. Basically, this guy who's got mental powers, I can outthink him. That's Kirk. <laughs> that is Kirk to the, to the limit, which is what I love about the, the old show, which is somewhat missing from most of the uh, films. Wrath of Khan is the only one where, where it really com comes in. Kirk outthinks an absolute genius. <laughs> he goes in there and instead of just using brawn, he uses brains. It's wonderful. It's great. So Kirk is the kind of guy who, th uh, who, who would outthink anyone. And when they remember that, that is when uh, Star Trek has done well. I loved it. It's a great episode. Again, I watched this one with my wife, Jen, and uh, I don't think she'd seen it before because uh, she was going, hmm, hmm. Wasn't sure what to think, but enjoyed it anyway. It's a really, really good episode. Acting's pretty good. 
the the lighting effects on some of it was very nice as well. <laughs> as uh, Jen noticed, they love the lighting where it's just the eyes highlighted. <laughs> It's very well done. And some of the angles that they use to... Because uh, Charlie, uh, the actor, is just a normal person. But they use some angles so that his uh, chin looked smaller than his forehead. And so that he looked a little bit alien when he was using his powers. And that was a really interesting touch. But what was the best touch? And this, uh, this lives with you. The makeup effects. That one part where Charlie gets really frustrated, it's like, stop laughing, and then just takes the faces off members of the crew. I saw that when I was a kid. It was scary then. These days it's like, whoa, it's still creepy. It was scary when I saw it as a kid. And I can imagine uh, what people seeing it the first time it was on would have thought, because, whoa, that was a really effective uh, special effect and makeup effect there. Oof, yeah. Really good episode. Very, very strong start to this show. I can see why it became a big thing amongst fans because, yeah, two down, two excellent. Nine out of ten. Warp Factor, nine, please, Mr. Sulu. Absolutely love this one. Guys, that's all we got for you this time. I will be back with more reviews. Of course I will, because we're going through the whole set. Right from the start, right to the new stuff. This is Trek Hammer. I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching a video. Take care, live long and prosper, I'll see you next time. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon, it really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>